dim-witted borderline pederast who tears up faster than a gay jihadi in a sandstorm. You have befouled the profession of teaching by accepting not only one, but two Teacher of the Year awards despite not speaking a word of the foreign language you purport to teach. Like the storied predators of yesteryear will. You pick only the most vulnerable students to favor while actively neglecting the others. Like that gross kid with the dreadlocks or that poor Irish idiot Rory or the black dancer whose name none of us remember because you rode his back to a win at sectionals and then promptly ignored him into oblivion. You positively worship a student if they can so much as carry a tune and yet you don't know a single name of the only true musical geniuses in that choir room. The band! I feel like I can't think straight. I'm just really, really worried that this isn't gonna work. Well, of course it isn't going to work. You're a weird bird lady with a hollow pelvis and OCD. And Will Schuster is a weepy man-child whose greatest joy in life is singing with children. And his best friend, 19. You do realize that Blurred Lines is a song about date rape, don't you? <laughs> what? No, it's not. Will, you need to back your ass up to the fact that you, a married 37-year-old, just performed a song about coercive sexual advances as nine minors twerked alongside you down the hallways of a public high school. Just when I thought I had finally killed my white whale, vanquished the tone, deaf, pan, sexual leviathan that is the McKinley High Glee Club, it returns to defile the great musical heritage of this nation, one execrable mashup at a time. Sue, you are nasty, manipulative, and petty. Will, you have more grease in your hair than the guy behind WikiLeaks. Oh. I would like to propose a deal. I'll give Unique a key to that bathroom on one condition. What is it? You and the Glee Club stop twerking for good. Sorry, Sue, but there's no way in hell that I'm gonna make that deal. Oh, for God's sake, William, that's your red line of all the things in the world to be outraged about. Apart, they're so shrill, so whiny, but together, a symphony of self-congratulatory sodomy. I believed their tender man love was for the ages. And when they broke up, I was devastated. Why? They seem to be doing so well. Now, unlike some members of the Glee Club who come and go for months at a time with no explanation, you two losers are always in that choir room. Even if for an entire week, the only thing you have to do is say something inconsequential like, Kitty's writer. Blaine, are you serious? And second of all, what kind of a meeting doesn't have bagels or something? Well, it would be hard to be married to you. And Becky has been scarred for life. Sue, I'm mortified. We are so, so... I am aware that the pheromones emitted from the orifices of your porous bird lady pelvis can cause an overwhelming urge to copulate in some emotionally stunted man children with butt chins who befriend teenagers and can't rap. Why could you not wait to copulate? Oh. I suggest you preemptively check into rehab as you are a future alcoholic. I mean, come on. Have there ever been two human beings more meant for each other? Oh, and yet somehow hackneyed circumstance and a pudgy ex-bully have somehow gotten between them. You know, I hate to ask you something during your midday ritual of devouring an entire animal carcass. So here goes nothing. Your journal. It's Christmas again. That time of year when parents aren't arrested for forcing their children to sit on an old man's weirdly hot lap. That magical season when five seemingly separate storylines are cleverly sandwiched between commercial breaks and then tied together at the end like a beautiful bow. Like that movie, Love Actually which I don't think anyone really cares for, and yet it is constantly on cable. So, Clayne is no more, huh? Okay. Well, guess I'll have to find a new hobby, like operating a bookmaking outfit that runs the numbers on which of your current boyfriends dies first. The gropey geriatric that Porcelain reads the newspaper to, or the bloated suicidal diabetic ex-bully that the gay, shaven, teenage Tom Selleck chooses to bone. Your bizarre, psychosexual obsession with that glee club was disturbing from the first moment you stalked a nude student in the showers. You know, I'm honestly surprised you didn't reenact what was clearly the formative event of your own teenage years. And Sandusky, the poor kid, right there and then. Oh, and I think those absorbent sweater vests actually hide the fact that you lactate every time you give one of your ex 
excruciatingly condescending pep talks. Your charms wore off a long time ago, William. Somewhere around Bieber week. 